felt is it turns out if you take a look, if I were to draw a picture here of the earth in the summer, okay, and I, let's say that I'm going to take a certain amount of light coming from the sun. Let's take this distance right here, okay. Now this would be the people who are in the summer. They are getting more direct sunlight. But if I were to draw that same um, two bands of light, I don't know if you realize that, but this amount of the earth in the southern hemisphere is getting the same amount of energy, I didn't draw that very well, as this amount, you see. So if these guys are at different uh, latitudes and, and whatnot, these will have the same amount of light traveling at the same, uh, uh, spreading out over more of the earth, more surface area. So that's why it's colder down here and it would be warmer up here. And that's true, of course, in the reverse, in the winter. So if we take the winter, let's see if I can draw that better this time. So if I were to say about, I'm doing an inch, if you will, at least on my computer, this would be the winter. Actually, it's almost better if I did it in the top where it's a little bit more um, pronounced. So if I do this here, that's a straight line, wasn't it? And then I go right to here. This takes up a huge area of the Earth. But if I were to do that right at the equator, so I'm going to draw this line, and I'd say it's about right there, yeah. These guys are getting the same amount of energy as this whole portion of the world. So that means the light is more spread out. We actually say the incident light. And if it's more spread out, there's less energy per square mile, square foot, whatever, then that means that you're going to have less energy, therefore less energy, less, uh, less uh, temperature, be cooler, generally speaking. And down here, of course, the reverse will be the case. You'll get lots of direct sunlight, and you're going to get... Um, lots of uh, sunlight, uh, more, more energy per square foot, and it will be warmer. This would be like Kenya, I think it looks like. Okay, so that's why we have the seasons, the tilt of the earth. You remember the video clip we just did, all right? And you can also look at this particular picture, and in this picture, we kind of see it um, illustrated. The earth is rotating. Notice that the earth is always tilted at the same angle. Um, it just... It just is uh, rotating around the Earth at 23.5. There's no wobble to it. Okay. Solstices. Now, what's a solstice? I, I, we've alluded to this, but let's uh, kind of uh, revisit here. The solstice is when it reaches its top point, okay, or kind of the middle point. So when it, actually when it crosses the ecliptic, actually, as it turns out, uh, which we talked about earlier. So in um, June, when the sun is essentially standing still, the, as we would say, the longest day of the year, the, the earth is tilted and the sun appears to not move and then it changes direction. It was moving north and now it's moving south. And that's true in the reverse direction in November. By the way, this is on June the 21st. So June the 21st of year is the summer solstice. The winter solstice is on December the 21st and that will be the shortest day of the year for those of us in the northern hemisphere. And then in March and, um, and in September, then we have our equinoxes, the s fall and the spring equinox. Okay? All right. So this is the motion of the sun, which we've talked about. And we kind of see this. Now, to kind of show this a little bit more uh, clearly, um, if we take a look at the ecliptic. Now, what's that ecliptic again? That's the motion of the sun, right? The sun is the ecliptic. And so as the sun rotates, so to speak, and doesn't really rotate around the earth, but it appears to. Well, let's just talk about it from the perspective of the ancients. As the sun rotates around the earth, it will hit, it will cross the axis in the autumn equinox and the spring or the vernal equinox. And then the summer solstice is when it's highest in the sky. And the winter solstice is when it is the lowest in the sky. And by the way, when I say highest, it really is the highest as you look up. And in the winter solstice, the sun looks much lower on the horizon. All right. Now let's talk briefly about what's called the zodiac. Now you've probably heard of the zodiac, you know, all the constellations. And there are people who believe that the, um, uh, there's kind of power in the stars, the astrologers. Don't get the astrologers mixed with the astronomers. They're not the same thing. And this right here, this uh, sort of curvy line right here, if you see it, is the uh, ecliptic or the path of the sun. And so essentially what the zodiac um, stars are those constellations that fall along the ecliptic or the path of the sun. And then those stars that are kind of grouped, they've got Libra and Virgo and Sagittarius and Aquarius and all those different things. Now there are other stars, other stars up here, they are just not a part of the zodiac. Not all stars are in the zodiac, only those that are on this sort of narrow band, um, narrow band right here that um, follows the path of the sun. They give kind of a little leeway either direction. It also turns out, by the way, we haven't talked about this, but that the planets also fall along the zodiac. OK? 
okay? And so you know probably heard of these different uh, parts of the zodiac. And here's a, a way to kind of look at it again, the zodiac. Here's Sagittarius and Scorpio and Libra. And these are the different um, um, shapes that make the, you know, Leo. Somehow they get a lion out of that. I'm not exactly sure. And et cetera. <laughs> And you can kind of see um, this is the sun. Now we're getting a better pick perspective is the, the earth. So if it's May, you can probably see Libra and, you know, different things as well through here. And if it's um, January, it looks like Gemini will be uh, uh, kind of at the, at the forefront, etc. So you can kind of see how that works. All right. What about planets? Now, planets are weird. The planets do lie along the zodiac too, but the planets do something weird. Okay, and they do something called retrograde motion. Now, again, um, you need to make sure you're continuing to pause the video and writing this down. What is retrograde motion? Well, most of the uh, the planets and this are the stars. If I as we go back, in fact, let's uh, let's do. So, if we're looking here at the sky um, and the motion of the sky, you can't quite see, but it's going to get dark here in just a minute. There's the moon traveling, and there's the stars moving. That night, that you star, it could be a planet. Ah. Uh -huh. There it goes. Okay, so the stars appear to move. The planets do something very odd. Is they, they also move, okay? They move across the sky, but over the course of a year, sometimes they're gonna do something unexpected. Let's get back to the nighttime here in just a second. So come on, nighttime, 3,000 times the speed. Pause. All right, so this right here is Galileo. Oh, it's a Galileo probe. Interesting. Okay, so that's not... Okay, so that doesn't count. Well, I'm trying to find a planet. See if I can find a planet. They tend to be brighter. And... I don't see a planet, of course. You know. Anyways, one of these might be a planet. We certainly have the moon right there, and that might be a planet. Nope, it's no, a different star. So some of the, the planets tend to be brighter. I'm going to kind of move it around and see if I can find a really bright thing and think, oh, that's probably a star. or a, uh, That's a multiple star. Cool. Okay, well, I can't find a, pl uh, uh, a particular um, planet that's uh, visible um, tonight, but let's pretend there was. Um, so the stars, they move, right, as we, as we can see. So the stars are moving, but it turns out that the planets also move, but they and they tend to do just what we're seeing here, but over the course of the year, they will do something very odd. So if you take a look, this is a retrograde motion of Mars. So we're going September 9, you see? They, they move across the sky each and every day. This is the motion over the course of a year. And then they move backwards, backwards, retrograde motion. This confused the um, scientists or the ancient astronomers, I should say, because they couldn't figure it out. Why does it move backwards? In fact, the word planet means um, vagabond, uh, meaning they don't follow the rules. So a vagabond would be like a student who doesn't follow the rules. Hopefully nobody of you are vagabonds. So um, <laughs> hence like a pirate. So um, they break the rules, hence the retrograde motion. 